Power-ups can change a course completely from giving us the chance to fly all the way to invincibility. Today, I'm going to show you eight unique Super Mario Maker 2 power-ups ideas to add to any level. Let's get started. Our first idea puts raccoons in the snow with the Super Leaf power-up. In this one, we have to spin our tail to hit snowballs into the on-off switches. Once we successfully complete a challenge by hitting the switch, the pathway opens up to continue downward. One-way gates prevent Toadette from both getting to the snowball and hitting the on-off switch manually, but the snowball can still be hit through the gate. These challenges start as simple as just spinning in place, and then can get increasingly more difficult. We can add jumps in while spinning in combination with cloud blocks that can catch the snowball or the player. We can also have the snowball get launched towards us by using Spike or a Bullet Blaster for a timing challenge. Trampolines help to change the trajectory of the orb, and seesaws can prove to be quite a balancing act when trying to launch this frozen water upward. Thwomps can be used in two ways here, as a vessel to bring the snowball to us quickly, or as a defender that protects the sacred switch. Feel free to use giant snowballs for a larger challenge in combination with bumpers instead of one-way gates. Bumpers are fantastic because Toadette can't go through it, but the snowball can. For an ultimate trial with the Super Leaf, pair the flying mechanic with spinning to take the snowball to new heights. Most levels allow us to get a power-up that helps make the course easier, but what if we build a course where power-ups are harmful instead of helpful? In this idea, we feature a level with vertical auto-scroll downward. The trick here is that we must spin jump on piranha plants that are descending and there's no ground to stand on. Because our quote-unquote floor is made of enemies, certain power-ups will cause us to destroy them and we will fall to our death. We can use stars, fire flowers, and even the moon as potential pitfalls while Luigi tries to survive the vertical challenge. The Desert Knight theme in the Super Mario World style adds wind that changes direction to add another obstacle for poor Luigi. We can even use giant piranha plants as a variation or add gaps in the floor to spice things up. Be sure to support the awesome creators of these courses by checking out their level codes in the description below. We all dream about the power of flight at some point in our lives. Luckily, the Cape Feather can make it happen we can start with a course designed around the flying mechanic of the cape. If the player continually presses right, then left on the joystick or D-pad, Luigi can easily glide through the sky. Try to see how far they can go before he loses altitude. We can also have more precise flying challenges where the player needs to dive through pipes. If the player presses forward, in this case, the right, on the D-pad for a bit longer before they press left, we'll get an upward swooping effect. Make challenges where they need to master the art of flying to follow the coin trail and get to safety. Now I know what some of you are thinking, I already knew that YouTube guy, teach me something new. So I have a bonus feather idea for you. You can also use the cape feather as a puzzle item. If we spin at the right time, we can get the feather to move across the screen without collecting it. Create challenges where the player needs to take damage to move on, but still needs the cape to progress. Here, Luigi needs to hit the question block with the cape, and he can only do that if he brings an extra power-up with him. We can add obstacles with platforming or even enemies to avoid. The night ground theme changes the behavior of the feather power-up, which creates an interesting new challenge. Or you can even mess around with Yoshi licking the feather to activate note blocks. Sometimes we get stuck designing a course with a single power-up in mind. Why not make a course that requires us to use various power-ups in a specific way? The Green Dream Machine, Link and Luigi, have decided to work together to get through this dungeon. Each room can use a different power-up for Luigi in combination with the Master Sword for Link. We can make puzzles where Fire Luigi has to melt ice so that Link can hit a sideways on-off switch. We can create P-switch areas or PAL blocks that only the Super Ball Flower can access, or areas that Link must bomb to open up. How about the Mega Mushroom to let us break open hard blocks above us, and arrows to trigger a PAL that's trapped behind a bumper? 
the possibilities are endless. Taking this concept further, we can create a unique and fun final challenge. Using a combination of three power-ups, our dynamic duo must figure out a way to defeat this evil enemy stack. The Mega Mushroom lets us open up new pipes to access other power-ups. We can use them to unleash Flying Boom Boom from his terrible tower, and then the player can beat him using whichever power-up they like best. Speaking of Link, let's explore some awesome ways we can use his abilities. In this course, we add a clear condition to keep his feet glued to the ground. We do this to ensure that the player uses specific Link abilities instead of just jumping to get through each challenge. In this room, we see a P-switch on a seesaw that needs to rise to be activated by this muncher. A bomb alone won't cut it because they're evenly weighted, and we can't jump down there because of this clear condition. But Link can actually move a fire flower by attacking it with his sword to drop it down onto the seesaw and, in combination with a bomb, make the P-switch rise. Link can also chop trampolines upward to create a pathway for bombs like in this room. Use his arrows to shoot bombs to get them to fall and destroy the giant piranha plant holding the key. We can use these elements to make a final fight against Boom Boom. We need to chop the trampoline and bomb the pipe open to start. Then we use our archery skills to take out the deadly fire piranha plant and drop bob bombs onto conveyor belts. Finally, with some well-timed chops on the on-off switch, we can take out Boom Boom and escape this dungeon. The Drybone Shell is a power-up that typically lets us surf on water, poison, and lava, but it also lets us surf on the snow. Let me explain. In this idea, we use the Slippery Snow Night theme and revolve our challenges around the Drybone Shell. When moving inside of a Drybone Shell, Luigi bounces up and down slightly. If we put spikes above and below a one-block gap, we can ensure that he doesn't move, otherwise he'll take damage. Because everything is slippery, we can make areas to gain momentum and then have Luigi simply slide through without pressing any buttons on the controller. We can create platforming challenges with icicles, jumping out of the shell, and precision timing. To ensure that they keep the shell all the way through each area, the final challenge requires a jump out of the shell and into the pipe. These one-way gates prevent a player from cheating and just jumping from below. We can add complexity to this idea by giving the player a mushroom and a dry bone shell and expecting them to keep both. Additional challenges can make us slide through icicles and duck into small gaps in between moving with the shell. More careful jumps with icicles and shallow ceilings will give a satisfying finish to this perilous challenge. What do you think is the best power-up in Mario Maker 2? Let us know in the comments below. We all know that a fire flower can burn through frozen coin blocks, but have you ever thought to make a vertical challenge where we need to burrow strategically through them? To make this course, we start the main section at the top of a vertical subworld. We have enemies shooting projectiles at us while the angry sun is chasing. We need to burrow a safe pathway to reach the next level. Fire piranha plants and bob bombs are hiding in the ice, slowly destroying the pathway and creating danger for Luigi. The angry sun attempts to apply painful sunburns to Luigi throughout this idea, but can actually be useful for us as well. Other than giving him some much needed vitamin D, the angry sun can help create a pathway if we lose the fire flower and get stuck. We can make multiple levels of difficulty by changing the shape of the ground tiles under the ice, adding more enemies, or even giving some enemies a boost. The hammer power-up can be so interesting for puzzle courses. We can create a one-screen puzzle where the hammer power-up is used in different ways. Toadette must use it to destroy hard blocks that stand in the way of essential tools. She can also use it to activate on-off switches from the side. The other main component of the power-up is the ability to build crates. Using these crates, Toadette can add enough height to go into this sideways clear pipe to reach the blocked off area at the bottom right of the screen. Another interesting property of crates is the ability to stack on top of skip squeaks. These hard skulled mice can carry a lot of weight as long as the crate is on top of their head. Using the build ability, we can stack all five crates that we can make on the skip squeak 
by throwing them through the clear pipe. And with the help of one extra POW block, the skip squeak can make the bullet blaster rise high enough to activate and shoot out a spike ball. Enemies like the skip squeak are so versatile and fun to use and make the 3D world style very unique to build in. Speaking of, if you want to see more ideas for the 3D world game style, click on the video on the screen right now. To continue to make courses, improve your level design, and stay updated to Mario Maker 2, remember to subscribe and click that bell. I'm Aristotle, and thanks for watching.